Our speaker tonight had spoke a few weeks ago at Friday, so if you didn't attend, um, he is here again tonight to share our goals for this year. And I will introduce you here to our district governor, John Anthony. So it's a real honor and pleasure to be here this evening. And uh, as I say to most of the clubs, when I speak to them, every time I say the word opportunity, I have to do a shot. And I think with this group, that's a reality, right? I mean, don't you get this isn't a, no, this isn't a, okay. So for those of you who were at the prior meeting and maybe have seen the, uh, you're not allowed to answer the following questions, but I think I would put it out there just to make sure that uh, we are, we are on track. So there are four, first of all, the most terrifying words in the English language, this is a quote from one of my favorite people, the most terrifying words in the English language are, we are the government and we're here to help. Uh, and, and I often felt like when the district came to visit our club, I'm from Mechanicsburg North, I always felt like that was a, a tone and tenor of what was happening. And, and my, my position on this has always been that the district is here to support you all in the way that you want to do Rotary. Uh, and so I am always looking for feedback from folks as I go around to clubs to learn what the district can do to help you do Rotary better the way that you want to do it. And so at the end of what I'm about to go through, I would love to hear from you if you have ideas or things that come up in your mind that would be helpful for us to be doing with and for you to help you be able to do Rotary better. And so uh, a lot of what you're going to hear tonight uh, is tied to those conversations as, as you go through the district governor line over the last three and a half to four years. And by the way, we're about to go out with uh, recruitment for the next district governor uh, coming up in the next month or so. So I'd love to talk with anybody who may have a level of interest. As you go out and you talk to folks over the, which is one of the greatest things you get to do in this role, you learn about what's happening and there are 42 clubs in our district and they are all doing Rotary a little differently. And there's something I think to be learned from each one of them, which has really been a, a great process. So I'll start the conversation with this. There are about four massive things that have happened in Rotary just since we've started this Rotary year, which started July 1. So if you weren't at the last meeting, can you give me an idea of what one of those four items are that happened in Rotary since July 1. Okay, so I'm gonna start you off with an easy one. I have one. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. Sorry. Um, it was the announcement of the first woman president in line. Woo right, and thank you very much for that. That's. Uh, Jennifer Jones is going to be the first Rotary International president. And we're very excited about that, not only because it's been since 1905, and it's been since the middle 80s that women were allowed in Rotary, and there are clubs in this universe that don't allow for women to join yet. It's, it's crazy. To have a woman president is outstanding. And Jennifer Jones is an amazing woman. I, I I highly suggest that you go to YouTube and you YouTube her and listen to what she has to say about different things. She was a keynote speaker at the Zone Conference last week. She does, she's amazing. And we're going to be blessed with a female district governor the same year in Juliet Altenberg, who is now our DGN. And so we're very excited. And that is number one. Does anybody have an idea? Number two. Another Rotary International announcement. Yeah, David. Is it uh, Rotaractors can now become Rotarians? No, but I should make a fifth one to my list because that's a great <laughs> one. Yeah, Rotaractors are now designated as Rotarians. We're trying to integrate the youth more into Rotary, and, uh, and why, why shouldn't we? So that was a good one. I think that may have occurred prior to July 1, which may be why it's not on my list. I'm just making that up right now. So the one I was thinking of right now is that polio was eliminated from a country and that brings us to two countries we have been fighting polio since the middle 80s it has been our stated top priority to eliminate polio from the face of the earth and we now are down to two countries that announcement came that it was eliminated from africa last month and the thing is even though it's been eliminated we have two only two countries left the 
polio count has gone up this year. And the polio count has gone up this year because of COVID. Our focus has shifted a little bit and we're putting money and resources and attention to COVID as we should be. But we also need to remember that COVID was a plane ride away. And we've been saying for a long time that polio is one plane ride away from coming back into the U.S. And so if we don't pay attention to it, if we don't put our resources towards it, it will come back. And guess what? We turned our head and the count went from 30 some in one year to over 100 so far this year. And so we need to focus on that. And Rotary International knows that and they are. We're starting a program at the district level to help raise money because all of this is driven by money to help raise additional money. You guys are doing points for polio and that's awesome. And I congratulate you on that. And you're doing, I'm sure other fundraisers at the district level, we're doing something called Polio Plus Society. So we know that Rotarians like to wear pins. So that's the pin you get when you join. You've heard of the Paul Harris Society. This is when you promise to give $1,000 a year to the foundation for all the good the foundation does. And so this idea, which I stole from somebody else at the conference, has been done in a couple of other districts around the country. And as it's been done, they've had 20% participation. And so we set it up that the Polio Plus Society is for somebody who promises to give $100 a year towards polio elimination until it's gone. $100 a year until polio is eradicated from the face of the earth. You get this cool pin, you get a little bit of recognition and appreciation for being willing to do that. And so you can sign up for that right on our website. We have a Google form, you go sign up. We don't track it. There's a button you can hit donate. All we ask that you do is you promise because we're all Rotarians. And so polio was the number two thing. The number three thing, anybody? Number three, in our world, when we do grants, I don't see anybody raising their hand, when we do grants, we have to focus that grant on one of six areas of interest. Right, David's going, oh yeah, now I know. So six areas of interest, if you go to RLI and you, and you take that class, which is like a bachelor's degree in Rotary, you learn that the first one is water because that's the most important thing. And then when you have clean water, you have di disease mitigation, right? Because of the clean water. And if you have clean water and disease mitigation, you can have better maternal health, but, but maternal and child health. And with those three things leads to education. And with those things, we can have better economic and community development. And if you have all those five things, you can achieve world peace a lot better. And that's how I remember the six. They threw a seventh in for the first time ever. And that's what the third thing is, is the seventh area of focus, which is now the environment. We can get money at the district and global level to address environmental issues for the first time. It is absolutely a, a huge thing for us here locally. And just a comment on, on global grants. Is it possible to get a global grant in Elizabethtown? Yeah, David knows because, yeah, thumbs up. And that's because all we need is a partner from somewhere else to partner with us. And we can have a massive global grant happen right in our own district. It, it doesn't go just that way, it comes this way too. We are an equal country. And so if you're thinking about doing a grant, you have to tie it to one of our now seven areas of interest. The new one can start July 1, 2021, the environment. And so that's the third thing, big thing that's happened just since July 1st. Anybody have an idea of what the fourth thing is? The fourth thing is a district centric thing. So in our district, we have for the first time in quite a while started a new club, and that is the Passport Club. Passport Club got anointed by RI about a month ago. They're having a meeting in the next day or so. They're having their charter night in November, and we are super excited. The Passport Club is a new concept in clubs that you may not have heard of. I'll give you a quick rundown. So we have a situation where people may be, there are lots of people, even in my own club, who weren't able to join Rotary or left Rotary because, for example, they had children and they couldn't come to the breakfast meeting anymore. Or in their area, it's a lunch meeting and they couldn't get out of work. Or in their area, it's a dinner meeting and they couldn't make it after work to get to the meeting on time. And so before even the idea of having more than one meeting, and so many clubs aren't your size and don't have that capacity, 
the Passport Club offers the opportunity, that's a shot by the way, for everybody in the district to be able, thank you, to be able to attend and be part of and share their passion in Rotary. It's two online meetings a month and two visits to other clubs, if you can, around the district. Plug into their service, understand what they do, bring that information back to the Passport Club, and then you'll be able to be part of Rotary in other clubs. So they'll come to your service projects. They'll come and be part of the, the projects that are happening. It's a district-centric club. And so we have about 65% of these people that are in this club are brand new Rotarians who could not do Rotary before. I'll give you a great example of one of them. And she's downstairs mixing my drink because she's a teacher, fifth grade. She can't get to a, a early morning meeting. She can't, certainly can't go to a lunch meeting and she's still working at five o'clock. She doesn't get home until about seven, eight o'clock at night. And so there's just no way that she could participate in Rotary no matter what position her husband held. And so when we started the Passport Club, she was able to share her passion for giving back and being part of service to the community, as was my niece, who is in your area. She works for Millersville. She's a very smart lady, and she's brand new to Rotary, but she's the, the membership chair for the Passport Club. And she just, she didn't have the ability to get to a meeting where one of these things are set up. So front end wise, it gets people in who maybe couldn't. Here's the other 35% of the membership, people who are going to leave Rotary. How many Rotarians are there on earth right now about? Anybody know? 1.2 million. How many people have joined Rotary in the last seven years? 1.2 million. And so that means in the last seven years, we've lost, I know quick math for you, 1.2 million people. And so when, when Una Martone was district governor and I became DGN, she said, John, think of ways that we could maybe create a safety net to try and capture some of those people that are leaving Rotary. I couldn't do it then, but this passport op opportunity was a great opportunity for people who maybe they're going to go live in a home and they can't leave as easily as possible. Or maybe they are going to have children or maybe some other life changes happened. They still want to be part of Rotary, but they cannot do it in their own club for whatever reason. Passport is a way for them to stay in Rotary, stay involved, and allow to be part of the solution. And so we're very excited that 35% or so of those folks that are in it, past presidents of some of the clubs are in there. Charlie Tremendous Jones is a glo was a global, international, motivational speaker. His daughter took over for him when he retired and then uh, ultimately passed away. And she's written several books. She speaks all over the United States and she's now a Rotarian because of the Passport Club. She couldn't join Rotary otherwise, but now she can share what she wants to share with the world and be a solution through the Passport Club into Rotary. So I'm super excited about that group. If you know of anybody, here's another example, right? My wife is now a Rotarian. My niece is now a Rotarian. Who in your family, who in your circle couldn't become part of Rotary because it was confined to a particular time of day? or the cost was overwhelming. These are the people that we could be reaching out to and saying, hey, we have a new concept in Rotary you can plug in to be of service to your community. And it's right there on our website. The district website has all the information and an application if, so, if you know somebody who you can't possibly get to join the E-Town Club, but they, they should be Rotarians. This is the solution for them. So those are my big four things. Anybody have any conversation or questions about any of that? All right, seeing none. Nobody's sleeping yet that I can tell. All right, so we're going to move on to just a couple hey, things. Hey, John. Yes. How many people are in the Passport Club at this point? You know, We launched with 20. We are now at 22. Great. Thank you. And, and that's, uh, again, uh, a couple of people that are new that joined after we started it. Uh, and I think we lost a couple because it took so long for RI to get, get it through because of COVID. The application and check actually sat on their desk that they weren't going in the office. So it took a while. And then we had a couple of new folks join. So uh, yeah, about 22 right now. What are the dues? The dues run uh, approximately $150 a year. We tried to make it as inexpensive as possible. So it includes the international dues and the district dues. 
but see, we don't do lunch, we don't do dinner, and we're not doing a lot of other things. We're just being part of what other clubs are doing. All right. So we talked about my four big things. I want to talk about a few other things that are happening, again, as a result of going around the district, talking to some of the clubs and some of the great people that are doing great things in the district. Uh, some of the smaller clubs, some of the bigger clubs, the meetup group that you heard about tonight. It was so awesome to hear about that in an opening conversation. The meetup group originated in, in Mechanicsburg North because Juliet met her husband there. Not, not, wasn't tied to that at all. It just happened to be that way. But the meetup group is a great way. It's an app on your phone that allows people to touch base with other people who are interested in things that they're interested in. So if you want to ride a bike, you can find people that are riding bikes. If you want to go drink beer, you can find people that are going to try different microbrews. You can plant trees. You can do anything that you have an interest in. And so when we put up the Service Above Self app or uh, meetup in the meetup group, we had 70 people sign up underneath it in the first 45 days. 70 people that had never maybe heard of Rotary because there's no mention of Rotary in there, but people that wanted to be of service to their community. We know that there are 2,200 Rotarians in our, in our seven counties and over a million people. And we know that those million people, many of them want to provide service and many of them have never heard of Rotary. And so we need to figure out how to plug them in. Meetup's a great, a great example of that. And if we can get every club in the district, we're taking that from a club-centric thing to a district-centric thing, if we can get every club in the district to put their service projects into the Meetup app, we feel like that thing will explode with activity. We had people come to our service projects and help us plant trees because of the Meetup app. So another thing that we, that we are doing uh, is the Interact Summit. So we have we had a, a gentleman who started or helped to start an Interact Club inside of a high school. And so we have him now because he had 75 kids participating in that in the very first year. We're trying to have him show other clubs in the district how to do that if, they, if they're interested in doing it. And again, we want to meet you where you want to be. And so we're bringing that value and that knowledge the Interact Summit happened a couple of weeks ago where people got together who are of interest in Interact, including we had two Interactors on the call on the Zoom talking about how do we help them perpetuate that. I, to the extent that, you know, I suggested a, a Facebook group so that the Interactors could get together and talk about what's going on in their different Interact clubs to help them advance what they're doing, to learn from each other. Of course, they laughed at me and said, we're not on Facebook. We're only on there for the grandparents. But We'll figure that part out. They want to do the integration. They want to understand what's happening. So we're excited about that opportunity as well. Also, the ride for, uh, I'm going to jump a minute, ride to eradicate polio. We talked about the Polio Plus Society. We talked about your pints for polio. But the district is sponsoring, under UNA's actually leadership, a ride to eradicate polio. So if you like to ride bikes, there's a Rails for Trails location right near Shippensburg. The Shippensburg Club is co-sponsoring, helping to make it happen. And so if you have any interest in riding on October 24th, you can sign up for that and help raise money for polio eradication, which is uh, very exciting. Another thing that we're doing new this year that we're excited about are these Zoom trainings. So Una Bartone is our trainer. If you've ever met Una, you know how uh, energetic and smart she is. And so Every month now, on the second Tuesday, we're having a training. We're having a training not just on rotary stuff, although some of it is. We're doing it on stuff that matters to you outside of rotary, like the first one was on diversity, equity, and inclusion. And so that was a fan, I don't know if any of you were on that, but that was a fantastic presentation. And so we're now starting at diversity, equity, and inclusion committee at the district level to help think through what that phrase, what that information, what that thing looks like for Rotary, for the district and for clubs. And so we're looking for people who are interested in being involved in that conversation. We have started a safety committee. As many of you know, there are many people in our district who are very smart about this kind of stuff. Juliet is a, is a nurse. She gathered nurses and doctors and food practitioners to put together a document to help clubs move from a Zoom format to a live format when they're ready 
as safely as possible. And so that document now exists on our website that any person, any club can pull down and read, and it's updated perpetually by what's happening at the state and federal level. And so uh, that is another committee that we have started. Another one that we've started is the communication committee. As you can tell, I'm, I'm pretty interested in helping clubs talk to each other. We need to speak better externally and internally. And so a communication committee led by a woman who was in a particular club and, and went to the Passport Club because she wanted to be more district centric. She's a PR professional and she's chairing the communication committee and she's looking for six people to help run this committee to think through external and internal communication policies, procedures, and we're going to ask for each club, and in your case, each meeting, to have a representative to the communication committee, a conduit, as it were, to share up the information that's happening in your club and for the district to share back down what's happening at the district level and across the clubs. What you did tonight is an outstanding example of what all clubs should be doing. That event that's happening at the, through the Mechanicsburg North Club, that's my club, that, that, uh, that movie night, we just heard about that like a week and a half ago and you've already got it on your screen. That's the kind of information flow that we should have in every club in every time, every way, so that they know what you're doing and we know, and we know what, and, and you know what we're doing. So communication committee, looking for members, but also looking for people, representatives at the club level, looking for people for the diversity, equity, and inclusion committee, looking for people that are interested in continuing on the safety committee, because that committee is going to continue on to think through other things beyond COVID. Not only the continuing concern of COVID, but other things beyond COVID, which I'm not smart enough to understand. I'm just believing whatever they tell me at this point. So I'm very excited about that. And so the Zoom meetings, the Zoom trainings that are happening on the second Tuesday of every month continue on. Last month was on Club Runner. This month, Una is actually hosting, and she's gonna be talking about fundraising in this environment which as you know, she's the CEO of Leadership Harrisburg and has done this before. And so what a, what a tremendous opportunity for you to think about or think through with a bunch of other Rotarians, how do we raise money in this particular environment in this time? And so I think that's gonna be uh, an awesome event. So stay tuned, lots of good trainings coming through there, global grant training, all kinds of good stuff happening through there. The other thing that we've started doing this year is we're having the leadership meet once a month. And that used to mean just the district leadership. That used to mean just the district governor line. Now it means all the presidents. And we're inviting the president elects now to come and be part of a monthly one hour, I promise, Zoom meeting that talks about what happened, what's about to happen, what's happening and what's about to happen. I bring in a speaker a month to have a conversation with them, a little bit of education, and then they break into their groups and they talk about what's relevant to them geographically. So far, the feedback has been pretty positive that we're able to communicate. Imagine talking to all 41 presidents across the district and learning from each other on how we're addressing issues that are happening now. Very exciting. Another great thing that we've started this year is something called the Speakers Bureau. This was born out of a conversation with a particular person in a smaller club who said, we really struggled to get good speakers to come to our club on a regular basis. And I said, well, I know that there are speakers happening all over the district and many of those speakers would love to speak to 41 other clubs. And so we've started a list on our website. How hard is that? And so if you have a good speaker that would like to talk to 41 other clubs, ask him to send an email to Melissa and she'll add him to the list. Name, address, phone number, topic, and a little bit about it. And he would have opportunity to speak to 41 other clubs and the 41 other clubs get to participate in the value that is those speakers and you sharing your speakers out. So the speaker bureau has been created and is up and running. An example of somebody who's on the speaker bureau that you may want to talk to is a guy by the name of Rick Copeland. Now Rick is the chair of the Rotary, um, I just blanked on it, Rotary Veterans Initiative. And so a couple of years ago, uh, Carlisle and McKaysburg North created a, a, something called Helping a Hero. And through the, the next couple of years, they raised enough money to build two houses for disabled veterans in Cumberland County. 
And so what that has morphed into now is a, uh, it's money for them to go to college, money for returning veterans to go to college and mentorship for those same folks. And so we're looking for, now we're taking it district wide, looking for more mentor, mentors, people who are in industries where these veterans are about to graduate from. I'll give you an example. There was a gentleman who was a veteran uh, who was, I think it was Penn State Harrisburg. He was there as an accounting major. He got hooked up with an accounting person from the club. They mentored him for a year. They put him into a internship at his firm. And in the third year, they hired him. And so Rotary is having an impact on that person's life beyond imagination. And, and now we get to make that multiply that by the entire district. And so if you're interested in RVI, you can have Rick Copeland. He's a retired Lieutenant Colonel who works over at the War College. He would love to come and talk to you about the RVI program. Another person who's on the Speakers Bureau is the Rotary Means Business individual. So Alden Cunningham, past district governor, an amazing individual, brought Rotary Means Business back from California a number of years ago. I think you guys have participated. And we were the number four district in all the world who was part of the Rotary Means Business National Organization. There are now over 100 districts around the globe that are part of this organization. Paul Harris started Rotary because he wanted to do business. He wanted to get together with people, business people of like mind and like heart. And from that naturally grew philanthropic endeavors. And so this Rotary Means Business is perpetuating our core, our base. And so I, I believe strongly in Rotary Means Business because it allows for some people who couldn't be in Rotary to be in Rotary. And it allows for additional membership development. You can bring people from anywhere to a networking event where they can have fellowship. And if, even if you're not in business, come to the meetings. Wouldn't you rather do business with somebody of like mind and like heart? Wouldn't you rather do business with a Rotarian? And so Scott Stevens out of the Harrisburg Club is taking over for Alden and he would love to come and talk. He's on the speaker's bureau, love to come and talk to you folks about Rotary Means Business and how, what his ideas are, how he's gonna grow that program. Another thing that I saw on your introductory scroll through the tonight is the billboard program. What another, what another cool thing that's happening and it's really happening because somebody said we need to figure out ways to market rotary better and there was a gentleman in the harrisburg club who is a higher up at lamar and he he put together a billboard program for harrisburg and i and i said to him about a year and a half ago is there any chance that you could put together something cool for the district and he came up with a program where for i believe it's a hundred dollars Every club can have their own billboard. For $100, you can put anything you want on your billboard. You can put, I don't know, new Paul Harris Society members, new members that joined, a picture of you guys doing service, almost anything that you want to put up there. How cool would it be to have 42 billboards around the seven counties talking about what Rotary does for our community? It's uh, just an amazing opportunity, and I'm so grateful to the gentleman for making that happen. So we've talked about a lot of things, and, and there are uh, many more things that are happening. We're, we're creating something. Called, you've heard of GoFundMe, so I'm not asking you to give me money, but I am saying GoFundUs is a concept that we're going to create at the district level because we know that people are passionate about certain things. So in your club, you may not be doing that particular thing at that particular time. But in Shippensburg, they may be doing that particular thing that you have passion for. An example is in Shippensburg, there was a Rotaract club that was trying to put in a community garden, but they couldn't find the money to do it. And I know that there are people all over this district that would give five, 10, 15 bucks towards helping that Rotaract club put in a community garden. And so why not put together a GoFundUs account that's an internal account that talks about all of the projects that we have going so that people who are passionate about a particular thing can share that passion, either getting involved in it or donating towards it. And so that, that, is, that is happening. We are working on a platform to allow for us to do that, both at the district level, but also at the club level. More to come on that. Our new youth exchange person, uh, Jill Tenney, 
is an amazing individual and I, I share that out. You would know that if you did uh, check my governor vlogs. This year we're doing gubernatorial vlogs and, and really they're just interviews with interesting people around the district. They're talking about their passion. My very first one was with, with Jill and, and she's the new chair of the Youth Exchange Program. And, and what an amazing, high energy, awesome person she is. And what they're doing this year because they don't have kids coming in or going out, is they're looking to come to you. They're on that program, that list of people who would like to come out and talk to you because youth exchange can be done in more than seven or eight clubs, which is all it's really done right now. And a highly impactful, life-changing program, and we could be doing it bigger. And so she is very interested in coming out or sending people out to have a conversation with you at your club about how it works. How do you get in the high schools? How do you find people that would house the kids? Do they, how long do they have to be there? All the details. We've been doing it at our club for years. I think you guys do too. It's an amazing, youth exchange is just amazing what, we, what we're able to do. Ryla is another one. I'm sure Gary probably makes it out to your club periodically. He's a, a super high energy individual. The teacher impact awards are amazing and happening again this year. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to be online yet, but it is happening. Uh, we still are working with pets and, and, uh, and uh, mid pre pets and MA pets. Those are both happening online. I don't want you to forget about the foundation dinner either. That's a uh, an annual event that celebrates the foundation and all the good that happens because all of you give money every year. And Rotary's Foundation is a, is a, a truly amazing entity and, and top rated globally as a foundation for the simplicity, but genius of its structure. You give money, they keep it for three years, and then they live off of the interest that that generated, and then they give all that money back to be given back to the world. It's, it's awesome. And, and so the Foundation Dinner is a celebration of that, of the work that's being done at the district level, I know you guys do. There are things that I would talk about if your club weren't doing some of the things that some of the smaller clubs aren't doing. And I, I'm trying to help them get beyond what their normalcy is. And so I'd love for them to partner with a club like yours on a district grant or a global grant for that matter, so that they're, they're feeling part of that action. We have about 24 of our 42 clubs that take a district grant. I don't know why, except I do have, I have had conversations with some of them about why they don't, but we're trying to make it a little bit easier. And there's some things in the works right now to try and make that district grant process a little bit easier for them. And then finally, before I start asking you guys questions, there's a couple of other things. One is the district conference. So the district conference this year was supposed to be at Kalahari, a three district district conference. We wanted to have Three districts with over 500, 700 people. I mean, those districts combined have over 5,000 people in them. To come to Kalahari, the world's largest indoor water park, which is in the Poconos, and, and have fellowship and do service and, and have fun and maybe learn a little bit. Well, we're not sure how that's going to look now. We had to back away a little bit from our commitment, but we're still committed to having a three-district district conference this year. So mark your calendar. Something's going to happen. It's going to be cool. We just don't know what it's going to look like exactly. April 30th, May 1 and 2. And we're, going to, we're thinking about service maybe in the localities. We're thinking about maybe having a gathering still at Kalahari. Of the, we did a survey and almost 100 people from the three districts said, yeah, we'll come. If you do it safely, we'll come. And so if we have over 100 people that will come, well, then why wouldn't we want to put something together and have something that's happening simultaneously all across Southern Pennsylvania, from Philadelphia all the way out here and beyond, service projects happening on that particular day. Maybe we're gonna have global speakers talking because we can, because for the first time we can have people talking to us from anywhere on earth as part of our conference. So, RLI's happening on October 24th. There's a lot happening around the district. I know I've kind of rattled on. I'm not even sure where I am time-wise, but I, I would be grateful if you would share with me anything that you heard that you liked, anything that you heard that you don't like. I'm open to it. And if there's something that's been burning on your mind that you think the district should be doing or maybe even shouldn't be doing for you, can you tell the sun's setting? I'm getting darker and darker. Hold on one sec. 
better or worse, as they say. So anybody have any comments, thoughts, or opinions? Yeah, we'll go ahead and open it up. If you just remember to unmute your microphone, if you have any questions. There's a lot of information. I would offer out to you that I have a, uh, you, you are more than welcome to email me. It looks like they're fighting to take their microphone off you. To, uh, <laughs> We're working on technology. <laughs> John, I, I need help from these young people. No, I understand. But, you know, I just want to say, and I mentioned this when you spoke to the club on Friday, I really, really, really be feel bad for Patty Rooney. Uh, as a past district governor, mm -hmm. I you know, think back to all the wonderful opportunities and experiences that I had in my year as district governor. Mm -hmm. And I really feel bad for Patty Rooney getting cheated out of that. I feel very, very bad for you getting cheated out of all these wonderful opportunities and experiences of being able to be live with people. Mm -hmm. I also want to thank you because I think you've done an extraordinary job under these very, very trying circumstances. So I just want to thank you for everything you know, that you've done so far. And uh, I think the district is in good hands. Thanks, John. That, that, that means an awful lot coming from you, sir. I, I'm greatly appreciative of that. And uh, past district governor, uh, Patty is, uh, yeah, it was a sad for him the way that things went, but um, you know, we all, we all deal with the, the cards were dealt, right? So we're going to make some lemonade here uh, and we're going to do it the best we can. I'm, I'm, I'd say 20% of our clubs are live. And so uh, just the other day I was at a podium where there were probably 20, 25 people in the audience and there were another 15 people online on the computer in front of me on the zoom. And I did the presentation to both of them kind of at the same time. I, I, I can't speak for them. It went well for me. I don't know how it went for them, but it was okay. And it was safe and they were spread apart. And, and so what I, what I emphasize there is each club needs to do rotary the way they want to do rotary. And, and uh, we're going to, we're going to continue to do our leadership as best we can under these conditions. Kevin, I saw you kind of shaking your hand there, Kevin Schaefer. Yeah. Yeah. I want to thank you for talking as really good information in your vipping really good information i was on um, just curious i was on the meetup group and i i saw your your event for the the drive-in however i didn't see the window farm event that we're having in e-town saturday mm -hmm. and i i registered last week for that that event, they're going to be planting 300 bushes, and I feel like it would be important for the community of E Town to maybe get other members in Rotary. And I was hoping that I'd have other Rotarians there because I am going to be wearing my Rotarian shirt. Very nice. <laughs> and so. <laughs> Is anyone else signed up? Well, I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that's awesome, and I'm sure you guys will have it up on that uh, meetup group soon, right? <laughs> All right. If there are no other questions or comments, I, I want to again thank you for letting me come. This is, uh, as uh, past sister Governor Dennis knows, one of the greatest things about being in this role is meeting so many cool people as you roll through the three and a half years. And I've really enjoyed that. Your club is, uh, is definitely no slouch there. It's a lot of fun to come and visit you. So thank you very much for having me. And uh, if, you, if you feel like you want to share out any information or call me separately, please feel free. Great. Well, thank you so much, Thanks, John. We appreciate you joining us. And it's exciting to be part of a district that's fluid and changing and adapting and, and making new opportunities for everyone rather than just kind of shutting down. So thank you for all the work in, in our uh, community as well. So, uh, without further ado, I know we're a little bit over on time, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the meeting. Hopefully you can join us on Friday or Monday next week. I'm going to use my little makeshift for a rebel. <laughs> Have a great week, all everybody. Right. Bye. Thanks. Yeah.